Hey guys, it's Chris with uh, Theotech, and it's been a while since we've done any episodes. It's Alan's been busy, I've been busy, but uh, I wanted to take some time out just to talk about where we're at, what we've been up to. I think that we've talked a lot about Ceaseless on the podcast in the past. And uh, I, as you can see, Alan's not with me right now, but he did set up everything. Uh, it's just that today I'm the one who's on the spot <clears throat> having to give an update. But um, we talked a lot about Ceaseless in the past, and that's still going. We've, we've released the iOS app. We've released the Android app. We've released an app for the Amazon Echo. Uh, you can ask Alexa to tell you how you can pray on a certain day. And I kind of have viewed it as seed sowing or farming. Like we've, we've done a lot of the hard work to break up the ground and we've sown some of the seed and we're coming to the place now where after we've marketed and shared the word and sowed that seed, we can cover it up, uh, maybe water it a little bit and kind of let it sit there. And what we're doing now is we want to let it grow and let it just take its time to grow and hope in the hope that one day we will reap a harvest where there will be significant numbers of people being prayed for um, through the app. And we recently sent out an update um, it's, everything has to be by estimates now because we don't have an accurate way to deduplicate contacts between different people. So, but we estimated using the uh, the model that we had when we were using Facebook, that that using ceaseless uh, people have personally prayed for over four hundred thousand people, and you know for me that's actually pretty incredible uh, to think that just building a s small simple app that people can use on a daily basis could have that kind of reach and impact. And as, as many of you guys may already know, we have this mission, this goal of personally praying for everyone on earth. To do that, we need to reach uh, about 1% of the world's population, about 70 million people doing this. And we're still on, we're still pursuing that. But just, it's a great moment to be able to take a break, to take a breath, to take a break and give thanks uh, for what God already has done and the fact that we could come this far and that we're kind of in the letting it grow stage. So that's one aspect of my update for Theotech today. Actually, um, so what does this mean, right? Theotech, if you go to our website and stuff, we, in the past, and in the past I've mentioned briefly that uh, our vision, our overarching principle is uh, God obsession. We want God to be our ultimate customer. We want to obsess about what he desires and work backwards to deliver the results that he wants and uh, to do the things that please him. And within that overarching principle, can we be Earth's most God-centered company? Um, we've tried to make an example out of certain things. And so Ceaseless has been an example of beginning with uh, the customer requirements from 1 Timothy 2, where it's written that, um, where the Apostle Paul says that God desires all people to be saved. And that's why Apostle Paul instructs believers to pray for all people. And so if that's what God wants, we work backwards and we invent things like Ceaseless to help people to pray for others in the hope that they might be saved. So that's one example of God obsession resulting in product innovation. And um, the, here's another example. And this one is um, something that's really for the, for the wider public. Uh, not only Christians can use this specific technology. And, and um, that outcome that I'm talking about is taken from Revelation 7, where there's a vision that the Apostle John has of heaven. And in his vision, there are people from every tribe, every nation, every language, together, worshiping Jesus. Um, and if that's really Jesus' vision for his kingdom, then working backwards from that, the churches, the gatherings that Christians have today ought to reflect that multilingual diversity because it demonstrates that Jesus really is the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Um, and so when a person comes into one of our gatherings, when we have that kind of rich multilingual diversity, they see that, wow, this community is brought together not by their ethnicity, not by their social economic status, and not by all these other things that normally bring the world together and divide it. These people are brought together by Christ. And these people love each other so much that they would do the hard work of laying down their lives for each other to become one as a body, as a community, despite all the challenges of the language barrier. So that's that kind of kingdom vision. And it has one of those really, really, really hard problems that everybody knows about, everybody I think to some degree cares about. And that problem is language. Um, language is beautiful, I love its diversity. I can speak Indonesian as well as English. Um, but it's actually also very difficult. It does kind of separate people um, and it makes it hard to communicate and inconvenient. So one of the reasons why I think that churches in America um, can be very multilingually separated simply for the practicalities of, uh, of trying to deal with the language barriers, just, it's just too hard. So what Theotech wants to do and what we're building is a product called Spiffio. You can check out our landing page at spf.io. 
And um, our vision is to enable every event to be available in any language. And now I mentioned specifically churches before, but as you, as you can imagine, um, there are many other kinds of events that happen, everything from sports to concerts to conferences, where having the event available in many languages would open it up to whole new markets, would enable people who are normally marginalized to be welcomed in and become a real part of the experience, um, and think like government and public access. And so we want to deliver on that vision through some of our inventions. And probably move forward, um, that's going to be where we're going to invest a lot of our time and our energy is delivering amazing multilingual experiences with some of the technology that we're building. So uh, in brief, there's kind of three ways that we're doing it. One of them is through preparation. There's nothing like preparation. Uh, when a speaker takes the time to actually prepare a script and we can translate it with at the highest degree of accuracy, our system enables them to distribute the subtitles of what they're saying simultaneously in real time to the audience's mobile phones and onto a screens. And that way they can get in real time a very accurate translation of everything that's happening during an event of all the speech that's being communicated. So number one is preparation. Number two is interpretation. Now this one's in the works. Um, but I'm very excited about it. And we want to enable anyone in the world to have interpretation on demand. The moment you need it, within 10 seconds or less, you should be able to get connected to an interpreter in language that you need so that you can communicate in the setting that you need to communicate in. Um, now, beginning with the idea of events, what this means is that we work with the event organizers to, set, to prep the system. Um, and the moment that any person comes in who needs a specific language, they can request it on their phone and they can get it within 10 seconds and start hearing whatever's happening in that event in their native language. So the first one was preparation, the second one was interpretation, and the third one is automation. This is the sci-fi scenario. And so many of you guys may already be familiar with things like Google Translate or Microsoft Translator. I myself did some master's degree research in machine translation um, and I've been playing a lot with some speech recognition technologies. It's a very exciting field. So we know that the quality of these things is not yet to the point where people can really depend on it, but it's a fun tool and it's still useful. And so we also support in what we're building automation, which means that when you don't have preparation, when you don't have interpretation or can't afford it, um, we provide the baseline as well, which is that you can have an automatically translated, automatically transcribed version of that experience as well in your language. So that's how we're trying to cover all of those use cases so that any, you know, any event, and specifically towards the kingdom vision, any church, um, can begin to say that we offer our experience in any language, and English is not required here. Uh, so that's our dream. Can we help multilingual churches to thrive, and specifically for the kingdom, as a reflection, as a foretaste of God's kingdom, through the things that we're inventing? And then secondly, more broadly, can we bless the world at large? with a solution that they've never really seen before that's so seamless and integrated that they can begin depending on um, interpretation and translation as a utility, that, that they can go anywhere in the world and feel confident that they can communicate and be there. And uh, can we enable people who deliver experiences to serve their audiences better than ever before in any language? So that's kind of where Theotech is going to be focusing a lot of its efforts moving forward on this one product called Spiffio. I uh, appreciate your support and prayers for us as we pursue this really big challenge. And uh, yeah, I'm just really grateful for the time to be able to give a brief update. So thanks, until next time.